Welcome in Behind Enemy Lines on the Nation Network. I'm Frank Cervalli, joined by Princey, joined by Tyler Ramchuk. I'm yep. the meat in the middle of this Alberta <laughs> beef sandwich, and <laughs> I'm also here as the bodyguard because <laughs> we're setting up game four at Rogers Place here in Edmonton mm -hmm. on Tuesday night, and there's a lot to talk about, a lot to get to. Let's start with a little vibe check. Mm -hmm. Princey, how are the Flames fans feeling and Flames Nation? I think they're feeling better today. Yesterday was a tough day, really <laughs> tough day. I mean, obviously the, the Lou Cheech stuff kind of overshadowed a bit of the, the tough loss that they took, but it's one game. It, this is not a series that's going to go four games. I kind of anticipated that the Flames might have got overwhelmed a little bit by the crowd, overwhelmed by a little bit of the attack of the Oilers, so not a good feeling uh, yesterday, but put it behind you. Focus on game four tonight. It's a long series. Let's go. Daryl Sutter mentioned that the Flames' younger players who hadn't been in that type of environment might have been a little intimidated but Tyler just getting a little sense being around town in yeah. the YEG today that maybe there's a little confidence in Oilers Nation is should they be worried to maybe be a little bit overconfident for Oiler fans and Oiler Nation. Well, first of all, it was a rough day for Flames fans because they were dealing with a loss. A rough day yesterday for Oilers fans dealing with their hangovers after partying <laughs> so hard. That's the um, Canadian tradition yeah. now in the playoffs. Every other night it's you know, <laughs> detox yeah. just to retox. Yeah, um, but been. there is a bit of like confidence and almost swagger in the air here, I think. And that can be a little bit dangerous because you just never know what you're going to get in the playoffs. And sometimes confidence can be death. But for the Oilers, they went through a similar experience like this in the first round, right? Where they were up 2-1 on LA. They had a chance to go pedal to the floor and pull away with that series. And they laid an egg. So I think the team on home ice tonight having hopefully learned that lesson in round one, comes out with a much better effort than they had against the Kings. Yeah, we'll see if they learn that lesson that Mike Smith mm -hmm. was talking about unprompted after the Game 3 win. And it was mayhem outside of Edmonton. Oh. They're all banging on the glass at the <laughs> Hall of Fame room as that was happening. Mm -hmm. And so he noticed it. He's saying, basically, look, we've got six wins down. We've got at least ten more to go to get to where we want to get to. That brings us to our keys to the game. Princey, when you take a look from a Calgary mm -hmm. Flames perspective, what is the key? I think your best players have to be your best players, and that starts with Jacob Markstrom in net. I cannot say that he's been the best player for the Flames really in any game, really. Even going back to the Dallas series, I guess. Your best player's got to be your best player, and they haven't gotten that goaltending performance from Jacob Markstrom that's going to steal them a game. You know, they can put up as many goals as they want, like we saw in game nine, or, or nine goals in game one, but when you're letting in six goals, that's not going to do anything. So that also relates to Matthew Kachuk, to Johnny Gaudreau, to Elias Lindholm. All these guys need to step up. They need to perform. Um, and my second key to this, too, is these Flames need to stay out of the penalty box. Yeah. They cannot give McDavid, Dreisaitl, that lethal power play. They cannot give them any opportunity to capitalize on that. So the players that are their best players need to be their best, starts with Markstrom, and stay out of the box. What are the keys from the Oilers' perspective? From the Oilers' perspective, listen, it's great that you're getting the scoring that you are from McDavid and Dreisaitl and Kane in that top line. But for tonight, you know, maybe you're not going to get four goals from those superstars. You need that second line led by Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, and you need that third line as well. That's kind of turned into a bit of a kid line here for the Oilers with McLeod and Yamamoto there with Fogel on the left side. Get a goal from someone who's not the big guns, and I think it'll go, to, it'll go a long, long ways in getting another big win here tonight. All right, so I'm going to give a, a, key, a key for each side yeah. here. And Perfect. When you're looking at the Flames' perspective, it's, you know what, get to your identity. That was the one thing missing from Game 3 where did it go? That ferocious forecheck, where was it? The Flames have dictated the play all season long. They weren't able to do that in Game 3. I was shocked to see that team sit back. They just didn't look like the same group. And from the Oilers' perspective, they know they're getting Calgary's best punch mm -hmm. in Game 4. They have a real opportunity here to be knocking on the door of the Western Conference Final. Crazy to think about. First time yeah. since 2006. Don't let that get in your head and survive the onslaught and give yourself an opportunity to win the game, have your best players be, uh, and another shining moment for Connor McDavid and company. I think one thing we can kind of all agree on, though, sometimes when a series like this has the hype this one did coming in, it tends to not live up to it. I think the sizzle has been real, and this series has lived up to the hype through three games. No doubt, plenty of steak, as you said. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> plenty of Alberta beef yeah. as this battle of Alberta has raged on.